Hello, thank you for your interest in the session. Uh, my name is Tiago and I'll be focusing on the mechanical behavior of the meraging seal produced by SLM. This presentation is divided into four parts. I'll be showing some of the experimental and numerical work, as well as material modeling on this particular steel alloy. As you probably have noticed, additive manufacturing has been increasingly employed in the most varied uh, industrial applications, as we can see in some of the illustrated examples, uh, from aeronautics to automotive and the medical industry. Um, this trend has been motivated by some of the most important advantages of the additive process. Also important to note is the fact that most of the parts will have a functional purpose and therefore serve as structural components, for instance. From the actual manufacturing process to the validation of structural requisites, the numerical simulation is one of the most used tools in components design. The simulation of an optimized part is even illustrated. A clear characterization need arises in order to be able to simulate the additively manufactured materials. Due to its outstanding mechanical properties, the grade 300 meraging steel, also known as 18 nickel 300, is one of the most popular printed materials. Its excellent strength ductility ratio makes it a very good choice for demanding applications. Its ductility is illustrated in the conventionally manufactured um, material uh, by the line 3, which represents uh, area reduction, which is nearly 80% for the non-aged uh, condition. Uh, the fact uh, that it's, it has a good weldability increases the printability of the material, which is why it is widely used in the additive manufacturing field. Moving on to the experimental procedure, a set of distinct raw geometries with different purpose was printed through laser powder bed fusion. Uh, the printed parameters are shown and uh, they correspond to the optimal solution by the manufacturer towards part density and mechanical strength. Uh, the distinct uh, raw geometries correspond to large square prismatic geometry for tensile testing, um, rectangular prismatic geometry for physical and thermal testing, uh, small square prismatic and cylindrical geometry for compression tests in two different directions, and also hat-shaped geometry for a, a multi-axial compression testing uh, which is the more intricate kind of testing we have in this, in this um, methodology and will be further shown. In this slide, we can see some relative density and chemical composition results. Um, the relative density was measured through micrograph analysis and we can see here that for the two distinct tested uh, directions, um, parallel and perpendicular to build direction, um, the relative density is, is almost uh, the same as a, as a conventionally manufactured material, so 99.7%. Um, moreover, with regards to chemical composition, uh, this was measured through spark emission methodology, and we, we, we can uh, see that the carbon content is almost negligible, which is good for minimizing corrosion uh, due to carbide precipitation. And also, uh, it hen as, as uh, previously mentioned, it enhances weldability, which makes this alloy uh, a good choice for AM. Uh, the micrograph samples used in porosity measurement were then um, etched, and um, with chemical etching, it was possible to see the grain morphology of uh, additive manufacturing uh, samples and also the conventional samples, uh, showing the plate and lath martensite. Um, also, with electrolytical etching, we could, uh, we could inspect the, the melt pool geometry uh, of uh, the additive, additive manufactured sample. The electrometric tests were performed showing phase changes in the meraging steel. It is possible to identify uh, the precipitation, uh, martensite reversion, and martensite transformation in both uh, metallurgical conditions. Uh, it is also important to note that uh, in the conventional steel, uh, there is a higher contraction in the reversion to austenite. This suggests that uh, a higher austenite content uh, in the additively manufactured steel. The thermal conductivity and specific heat were measured in both uh, meraging steels through the laser flash method. Um, despite being very similar, it is noticed that the conventional um, 
conductivity and the specific heat is always uh, superior than the effectively manufactured steel. Moving on to the mechanical experimental characterization, uh, in the figure we can see uh, the compression test apparatus. This is a specially designed split Hopkinson pressure bar, which is located in Instituto Superior Técnico in Lisbon, and it allows for a distinct uh, distinct ranges of strain rate. So for small strain rates, we have an hydraulic actuator. For intermediate strain rates, we have an electromagnetic actuator. And for very high or uh, high strain rates, we have a pneumatic gun. Uh, these are coupled to the same system, uh, uh, which uh, enables to mitigate or eliminate uh, calibration errors due to the use usage of several load cells. The compression tests were chosen due to the re relative simplicity in obtaining the stress response for very high strain values. Uh, and this is ideal since we want to perform a comprehensive uh, characterization for the finite element softwares. Um, the compression test involves placing a specimen between two flat parallel dies and reducing its height by compression. Uh, three distinct uh, strain rate scenarios were, were tested uh, and this was a quasi-static. Uh, so no speed, uh, very small speed, uh, 300 per second, 2,000, and 6,000 per second. In this slide, we see the result for the quasi-static compression. Um, a higher mechanical strength is noticed for the additively manufactured samples. Uh, also important to note is that uh, within the additively manufactured samples, um, the one that is perpendicular to build direction has a higher strength than the parallel to build direction. Uh, th this is uh, related uh, to the higher grain boundary density, which is due to columnar grain formation. With regards to the dynamic uh, compression tests, uh, a typical strengthening with increase of strain rate is noted, as we can see here and also here. And it's interesting to, to notice that uh, the strengthening is higher in the, in the additively manufactured samples than uh, in the conventional. Um, also important is to note that with increasing strain, um, the high strain rate curves tend to, to come to values of the quasi-static response and even lower than the quasi-static in the, in the conventional material. Um, this, this apparent softening seems to cease at uh, medium strains and uh, additional hardening happens which may be a competition of the strain rate and thermal effects. The tensile tests were performed in a typical servo-hydraulic machine. Um, distinct uh, smooth and notched specimens were used in order to um, determine the onset of damage for distinct uh, stress triaxialities. The low displacement results are shown here for the AM and for the conventional manufactured specimens. Um, despite the higher strength of the additively manufactured, um, it shows a significantly um, smaller ductility than the conventional. Also, it's important to know that since to being more prone to defects, uh, there is lower repeatability of the AM uh, material. The multi-axial specimens were uh, manufactured from the hat-shaped raw geometries. Um, these specimens serve not only to determine uh, the damage law, but also to confirm the flow stress model um, obtained through, for example, compression tests. Um, uh, these specimens are intended to be compressed um, in, in, a, in a typical servo-hydraulic machine, and using digital image correlation, uh, the onset of damage was possible to, de to be determined. There are three notch configurations for these tests. Um, the notch configuration uh, is characterized by the, by the angle uh, that the two um, holes make with loading direction. So for 90 degrees, um, there is theoretically pure shear. For 60 degrees, there is a mix of compression and shear. And for 120 degrees, there is tension and shear. And here uh, we can see uh, once again uh, the different strength to utility ratios of additive manufacturing and conventional manufacturing. So in gray, you have the additive, which is more resistant, but also less ductile than uh, the black curves, which 
are uh, relative to the conventional material. In this slide, we can see the last images of each test. For the additively manufactured samples, all specimens have fractured, whereas for the conventional, only the one corresponding to shear has fractured, uh, which highlights the, the higher uh, ductility of the, this condition. On to material modeling, all simulations were performed in Abaku software using an elastoplastic approach with von Mesesil criterion and isotropic hardening. Uh, the simulation of the tensile tests enabled the determination of fracture strain at distinct traces of stress, uh, promoted by the also distinct uh, notched uh, regions. As previously mentioned, double notched specimens enabled not only the damage on site determination, but also the flow stress validation. That has been done inversely through the simulation of the double notch specimen's deformation. That inverse flow stress determination was based on a hybrid approach supported by the tensile and the compression tests. Up to small strains, uh, the tensile test was considered. However, due to plastic instability or necking, it stops being valid. So the flow stress was built based on compression tests for higher strains. Using the damage law obtained by the double notched and tensile tests, and also the already mentioned hybrid flow stress, it was possible to simulate double notched specimens which show a very satisfactory match between the experimental and numerical low displacement curves. The coherence between the numerical and experimental deformed shapes allows for further validation of the built material model. The strain rate effect was modeled through the second term of the Johnson-Cook equation and determination of the relevant parameter was done through direct estimation based on the compression tests. It is well known that the fractured properties are also dependent on strain rate. However, it has been based on literature values of the same additively manufactured material. The numerical simulation is one of the most used tools in engineering nowadays for the validation of structural mechanical requisites. It is, however, essential to know the material properties of the new materials, such as the additively manufactured ones. This work presents a set of material properties ready for numerical software input. Thank you very much for watching this presentation.